Hello and welcome to this session in which we're still working in chapter 13, but now we're going to move into the idea of a portfolio. So in this session, in this chapter, we're going to be working with, more with portfolio. So it's very important that you understand what is a portfolio. Okay. Well, if you th really think about it, when you invest, when investors invest, they don't invest in one stock, individual stocks. They, they invest in many securities and many stocks. So they might have Apple, they might have Microsoft, they might have IBM, they might have ExxonMobil, or they might have also bonds as well, as well as other assets such as real estate and gold. So when you have a bunch of securities, not only one, what you do, what we say, it means you have a portfolio. So to really look, to, to just give you an example, for example, you might have Apple stock, you might have some Microsoft, you might have Amazon, you might have Netflix, uh, what's the symbol for Netflix, NFLX, I believe, NFLX, okay, so you might have, in here you have one, two, three, four different securities, because you have more than one, what we call this, we call this a portfolio. Now. The next thing we want to learn about is how to determine the portfolio weight. For example, let's assume you have uh, $10,000 to invest. You have $10,000 to invest. And let's let's go ahead and start to do this. So let's assume you invested 2,500 in Apple, 2,500 in Microsoft, 2,500 in Amazon, and 2,500 in Netflix, total of $10,000. What do we say? We say that you are equally invested. It means you invested 25% of your money in Apple, and hopefully we all know how to do this. 2,500 divided by 10,000. 25% of your money in Microsoft. 2,000 divided by 2,500. 25% in Amazon and 25% in Netflix. So what you're saying is, I want to carry those stocks equally. Or you could carry them differently. You could say, I want to invest 5,000 in Apple, 1,000 in Microsoft, 1,000 in Amazon, and 3,000 in Netflix. That's also 10,000. Now, what is your Apple weight? Apple weight is 50%, and hopefully we all know how to come up with 50%. 5,000 divided by 10,000 is 50%. Microsoft, I like it, but not that much relative to Apple. I invested 10%. And Amazon, I like it as much as Microsoft. I invested 10%. And for Netflix, I invested 30% of my money in Netflix. Remember, the percentages has to add up to 100%. Same here, it has to add up to 100%. So the weight of the portfolio has always had to add up to 100%. The same thing as the state of the economy. The state of the economy, if we said 20% boom, and it means, and we have only two state, 80%, it means bust. There's a 20% chance we're going to have a boom economy, 80% chance bust economy, always the probability of the state of the economy has to add up to 100%. So the weight has to add up to 100% and the probability has to end up, has to add up to 100%. Now, this is a good just introduction of how to calculate the portfolio, um, how to discuss the portfolio and the portfolio weight. Let's go ahead and look at the expected return, expected return of the portfolio. Now we're not looking at the expected return of the stock, we're looking at the expected return of the portfolio. Remember in the prior session, if you if you did not, you know, if you did not look at this, make sure you go back and look at it. We were working with stock L and stock U. So let me go back here just in case. So remember in the prior session, the expected return of individual stocks, we were working with stock L and stock U. And what we determined that the expected return of stock U is 20%, the expected return of stock L is 25 percent given given how they given how they perform in the, in the in the various states of the economy so make sure we're working with these stock l and stock q so here we go in case because we're going to be working with them and stock l has an expected return of 25 percent assuming 50 percent probability of the economy going into recession 50 percent of the economy probability of the economy going into a boom and a 20 percent return for stock q making the same assumption, 50% and 50%. So the expected return of L is 25, the expected return of U is 20. So this is what we're going to be working with those two securities. The only thing now is we're going to take those two securities and put them in a portfolio rather than carry 
one security, we're going to carry both and see what would happen our, if our, and our expected return. So we're going to form a portfolio and the portfolio will have a U stock and an L stock, just like we had Apple, Microsoft. So we just have two stocks, U and L. Okay. Suppose the economy actually entered into a recession. And in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to assume that half of the money invested in and you, so your weight is 50% and 50%. This is the weight. So suppose the economy enter into a recession. In this case, half of the money is invested in L. And remember, if we enter into a recession and half of the money is invested in L, L would lose 20%. So L would lose 20%. And the other money is invested in U. If you remember when we talked about U, you said U is a defensive stock. They will do well in a... Uh, uh, in a recession, which is you're going to make 30%. So your portfolio returns, so if you invest half of your money in L and half of your money in U, and, and the economy went into a recession, so 50% will earn, will not earn, will have a loss of 0.2. So this is 50% times negative 0.2 is negative. So you're going to earn, you're going to incur a loss of 10%, plus this is stock U, and this is really this really helps when we have a recession. Stock U is good in bad time. So 50% times 0.3 is 0.15 positive. So notice under a recession scenario, if we have both stocks, if we invest half of our money in, in U, half of our money in L, we, we would expect to earn in this portfolio 5%. Now um, now, what happens if we have a boom and half of the money invested in uh, stock Q and half of the money is invested in stock L? Under this scenario, stock L will do very well. Remember, stock L will do good in the in, in, a, in a good economy, so it will earn us 35%. And stock Q doesn't do very well in a, in, in a, in a boom, okay? So it will earn only... Uh, 0.055%. So if that was the case, we expect to return on the portfolio in a boom economy, 40% in a recession, given that our money is invested equally 50 and 50%. Okay. So what is the expected return on, on an equally weighted portfolio of stock of L and U? Now we're going to combine both and we're going to say under both a recession and a boom and the chance of that happening 50%, 50% and our money is invested 50, 50, 50. So now we're going to have the whole portfolio, the expected return of the whole portfolio. Now, basically we already determined under a recession, we earn 5%. Under a boom, we earn, we expect to earn on the portfolio 40%. Now, there's a 50% chance we have a recession. So 50% times 5% will give us 2.5% return. There's also a 50% chance, um, I'm sorry, this the first one was a recession. There is a 50% chance a boom will happen. And under those circumstances, we expect to earn 40%. So 50% times 40% will give us a return of 20%. So what's the expected return of the overall portfolio? Well, we expect to earn 22.5%. Now notice, what happened is we're going to earn 22.5% if there's a 50% chance of recession, 50% boom. So basically we're trying to diversify because um, uh, what we're doing is we're, we're investing our money 50-50 and now regardless what would happen if there is a 50% recession, 50% boom, we should still expect to make an earning. Now keep in mind, this is all projection, okay? As indicated, the expected return of the portfolio is 22.5, okay? We could have saved ourselves some work by calculating the expected return more directly given the portfolio weight because because this is the portfolio weight of 50 50 so it's easy to to compute this we could have reason that we expect that half of our money would earn 25 percent um because remember l is expected to earn 25 percent and half of the money would earn 50 percent and and this is the expected return of the individual stocks we could have have we could have did we could we could have did that Okay, 50% times the expected return in L, 50% times the expected return in U. The expected return of both for both securities together is 22.5. Okay, it doesn't matter how many stocks we have. Okay, this method of calculating the expected return works no matter how many assets there are in the portfolio. Suppose we had n assets in our portfolio where n is any number. 
we let X of I stands for the percentage in the portfolio and asset I. So this is the percentage. What we do is we multiply this by the expected return. So the percentage times the expected return, the expected return, plus we'll have another percentage as another security, so on and so forth. So this is how we could compute this. We could compute the expected, the expected return. Okay. So let's take a look at this example just to kind of reinforce what we just what we just learned. Okay. Suppose we have the following projection for three stocks. Um, there's a 40% chance of the boom economy, there is a 60% chance of a bust economy. This is this is the state of the economy. Stock A would earn 10% under a boom. 8% under a bust. Stock B would earn 15% under a boom, 4% under a bust. Stock C would earn 20% under a boom, zero, nothing under a bust. So notice, regardless, whatever happens, we don't really lose under any circumstances. So that's 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 a good portfolio, in a sense that all the return are positive under boom and bust. Okay, but that doesn't mean really anything. I'm just telling you there is no negative return. Now, we want to calculate the portfolio expected return in, the two, in, in two cases. First, what would be the expected return portfolio with equal amounts invested in each of the three stocks? So now we're going to look at the assuming uh, it's the amount is equally invested. Equally invested means we're going to invest one third, one third, and one third in stock A, one third in stock B, one third in stock C. This is because we have three stocks. Second, what would be the expected return is half of the portfolio in A with the remainder equally invested in B and C. The other scenario, we're going to assume that A, we're going to invest half of the money in A, half is 50%, and what's left for B and C, what's left for B and C, 25% and 25%, the remainder is 50-50, okay? Based on what we have learned in our prior discussion, we can determine that the expected return on the individual stocks are... 8.8, 8.4, and 8%. Okay, now what you want to do is you may want to go ahead and uh, practice to make sure you know how to compute the 8.8, the 8.4, and the 8%. Okay, and the first scenario we're assuming that the stocks are equally, the portfolio is equally weighted. So the scenario, what we're saying is, the stock is equally weighted. So the first scenario equally weighted. So go ahead and perform this calculation. Okay, hopefully you did this properly. For example, for the expected the expected return of stock A, what is the expected return? Well, there is a, a 40% 40% chance of, of a boom and under those circumstances stock A would return 10% plus there is a 60% chance of a bust, and under those circumstances, 60%, stock A would earn 0 0.08. So now what we can say is 0.4 times 0 0.10, 0 .0 which is 0 0.04, plus 0 0.6, 60% times the return of 8% will give us 0 0.048. So 4% plus 4.8% is 8.8 .8 or 0. Point, well, that's since we're using 0, 0. 0.88, which is equal to 8.8%. Now, if you want to do the expected return of B and C, you could always do the expected return for stock B and stock stock B and stock C. You can do that. Okay, which is that you should get 8.4 and 8%. Now. If the portfolio has equal investment in each asset, the portfolio weight are all the same. Such portfolio is said to is said to be equally weighted because there are three stocks and three stocks in this case, the weight are equally one third, one third, one third. So what's the portfolio expected return under those circumstances? If we assume one third, one third, one third. So stock A is expected to earn 8.8% and we have one third invested in that stock. Stock B, stock B is, is, is expecting to earn 8.4 and we have one third of the money invested in that. And stock C, 
is expected to earn 8% and we have one third of the money invested in that. So the expected return of the portfolio is 8.4. So what we did here is first we computed the expected return of each stock individually, given the boom and the bust. Then we we looked at the portfolio, assuming one third, one third, one third, um, one third invested. Now, in the second case, the portfolio expected return is 8.5. So the second case is what? The second case is 50% is invested in A, 25% is invested in B, and 25% is invested in C. Well, can you perform the calculation? Well, and to get 8.5. Well, let's go ahead and do it. So just this way we'll practice this. So what's the expected return of the portfolio? Well, let's do this so we can see the numbers, okay? So once again, now we're going to change the, we're going to say 50% in A, 25% in B, and 25% in C. Well, so 50%, 0.5 of the stocks will be invested in stock A, and stock A earns 8.088 uh, plus 25% will earn stock B 8.4, well, 0 0.84 plus 0.25 times stock C 0 0.08. So let's go ahead and perform the calculation. It should be 0 0.044 plus 0.25 times 0 0.084. That's going to give us 0 0.021 plus the third stock 0.25 times 0 0.08 that's going to give us exactly 0 0.02 so now we're going to take 0 0.02 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.044 that's 8.5 percent so notice we verified it it is 8.5 percent so what we did is we computed the expected return of the portfolio okay so this is the expected return of the portfolio um, I am not gonna do the variance in this session I'll just keep it for another session the next thing we're gonna look at is the portfolio variance because I believe I want you to first calculate the portfolio expected return before we move into the portfolio variance if you have any questions any comments by all means email me